and welcome to Crumbs and Doilies HQ. Now today I am going to show you guys something really cool that you've been asking for for a really long time and I'm really sorry it's taken me this long to get around to it. It is how to do the perfect drip cake and it is an absolute smash of a technique. So drip cakes have been around for a few years now and I don't think they're losing any popularity soon. Um, we do so many drip cakes here at Crumbs and Doilies, almost all of our cakes have drip on them and they look fantastic. Uh, but some of you guys have experienced a little bit of difficulty because there is a bit of a knack to getting it just right. Um, and over the years we've kind of tweaked our recipes and methods for the perfect dripping action. So I'm going to share with you all the secrets. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a drip with dark chocolate ganache and also with white chocolate which you can then colour. Um, so we're going to start with the dark chocolate one and it's really important to um, remember with this ganache that you're going to be using equal um, weights of chocolate and cream. Uh, this is definitely not a recipe you want to cup, uh, so please don't ask me for cup uh, <laughs> measurements. I'm not going to give them to you, I, I don't even know them, uh, because it's the weight that's important here because we're going to be using a 50-50 ratio. So I'm going to be using 60 grams of dark chocolate and 60 grams of double cream and that just will not equate to cups, to equal cups, so banish those cups, guys. Um, also, the chocolate that I'm using is important. I'm not going to be using a 70% cocoa solids dark chocolate. I'm going to look for something in between 50 and 60%. Um, it'll be a li little bit less bitter and it actually drips a bit easier. And with the cream, I'm using double cream or heavy cream. So anything that's 30% fat or over is just right. So, what do we do first? Well, I'm going to add my cream to my chocolate. Now, the easiest way to make ganache is in the microwave, but don't worry if you don't have one. Um, you can do this on the hob, so you would just bring your cream just to the boil and then pour it over the chocolate. Let it sit for a couple of minutes and then stir it and then you've got ganache, but we're going to do it in the microwave. Because this is quite a small amount, I'm going to start by doing it for 20 seconds, um, then I'm going to stir it afterwards, and then I'm going to do 5 or 10 second bursts, stirring after each one until it's just melted. Now, the consistency of ganache is pretty important, which means that if you overheat your cream and chocolate, it can go a little bit thick. Um, so you don't want to get it too hot, which is why you do it in very short bursts. And the dripping consistency is also very important. You want it to be um, drippy enough that it runs down and stops, not so thick that you have a big bulbous blob at the end of your drip, and not so thin that it just kind of all disappears into a pool at the bottom of your cake board. We def definitely don't want that. Um, so you might find that you need to just wait a minute before you use it um, for your ganache to kind of cool down a little bit. Um, I find that uh, one good way of testing it is against the side of the bowl actually before you put it in a piping bag. Uh, so you just pick up a bit with your spatula and just dribble it down the side and see how it moves. And I think that is just right. So the easiest way of piping drips onto a cake is using a piping bag or even a squeezy bottle if you're doing quite a lot or a large cake. Um, you don't need to use a nozzle in your piping bag at all. Just whack it straight in. And this amount that I'm, I've given you with 60 grams of both chocolate and cream is enough to completely drip an 8-inch cake. But if you're making a smaller cake or a larger cake, just adjust the quantities up or down because this is an equal 50-50 recipe it's really easy to do that and then you just want to take off a small amount off the end definitely don't make your hole too big otherwise it's just going to come gushing out so if you guys want to practice first before you go nuts on your actual cake then I would recommend doing it in the bowl you can do it around the side that way you can always put it back into your piping bag when you finish so you're not wasting anything. I'm going to do this straight onto my cake because I've done it a few times before. So um, there's a couple of things to remember. One is that don't forget about gravity. Gravity is going to help with your drip. Um, so you don't want to um, just keep on squeezing thinking that um, that amount of ganache is going to be plenty because you might find that in a minute or two it is just all pulled down at the bottom of your, your board. Um, there's another thing you need to um, think about and that is the spacing of your drips. If you like it to be um, even then obviously make it even but also apply the, an even amount of pressure on your bag. If you like it a bit more regular like I do then just do it a little bit more haphazardly like a little squeeze here and a longer squeeze there. Um, I quite like that look. So. Um, I'm also using a turntable just because it makes it easier to uh, turn <laughs> my cake and work around it rather than kind of having to move my entire body around. 
um, and I'm going to start on one side, doesn't really matter, and start squeezing gently. And when you start, just um, do a small section at a time and then move your cake around so that you're sort of sure what's happening. Also, if you are kind of practicing for the first time on your cake um, and you get these first ones slightly wrong, then that's just going to be the back of your cake. Don't worry too much about it. Just adjust your squeeze um, accordingly. All right, so that is the drip all around the outside, and you might want to leave it at that because you've got some kind of other plan for the top. But if you want to fill the top, uh, you just want to pour some ganache on top, obviously, and spread it around. But I would say don't put all of it on at first, um, just in case there's a bit too much and it kind of ruins the edges. And then to cover it, I'm going to be using a cranked palette knife, which is going to spread it all around neatly. And that is it done. So looking lovely and neat and drippy and gorgeous. And ganache will want to be set a little bit in the fridge. So just pop that in the fridge for half an hour. But that's your cake dripped. Now for the white chocolate drip. Now we're not going to be using a ganache for this because white chocolate ganache has a very, very different consistency to regular chocolate ganache and it doesn't drip quite the same. So instead, we're just going to be using white chocolate. But to keep it drippy, I'm going to be adding a little bit of cocoa butter, uh, which is going to help it to uh, be a little bit more runny. And I'm also going to add a bit of super white powder. That's this stuff. And that is because white chocolate really isn't white at all. It's actually a more kind of creamy yellow colour, which isn't always what you want, especially when you've got an amazing cake like this that's got all the colours on it and you want it to really pop and then you don't want to put like murky yellow drips on it, you want a white drip. So that is why I'm using super white powder, but if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. So I've got 110 grams of white chocolate and I'm going to add five grams of cocoa butter, which I've chopped up into little pieces, and about an eighth of a teaspoon of the super white. And you can add the super white after you've melted the white chocolate, but because it's kind of grainy and lumpy, it can be quite difficult to mix in. So I like to put it in at this stage just to make sure it's all mixing. And then just like before with the dark chocolate ganache, you want to do this in the microwave. Start off with a 20 second blast, give it a good stir, and then do it for five or 10 second blast after that stirring after each one. Now, it might seem like nothing's really happening at this point um, and all the way along with the white chocolate because it does take a little bit longer to melt, as does the cocoa butter, but it's still really important to do it gently and in short bursts just so that it does it evenly. So this is the perfect consistency, but with white chocolate, um, it does set a lot quicker than the ganache. Um, so while you want to look for a similar consistency as you were with the chocolate ganache, um, you need to work a bit quicker with it because it does set a lot quicker. So pop it straight into your piping bag. So it's the same, obviously the same technique as what we did earlier with the regular chocolate ganache. But because white chocolate is going to be setting all the time and because you're probably going to be working on a cool cake, you want to work quickly, do a little bit at a time, and you might find that you need to squeeze a little bit more out to get the perfect drip length. Now you might be wondering what this awesome cake is and I guarantee you it looks awesome now but it's going to look amazing when it's finished. Um, this is actually our pick and mix cake that we do here at Crumbs and Doilies. Um, 
we've actually done a behind the scenes on this cake, so I'll put the link to that in the description box below so you can check that out. And also, if you're in London and you need a cake, we do sell these on our website, so please go and check that out as well. I think that is pretty much done. So as you can see, that was super easy. This is already setting nicely, so it doesn't need to be put in the fridge. As I said, white chocolate just kind of sets. Um, and next, I'm gonna show you how to color your white chocolate. So for colouring white chocolate, it's really simple, but you do have to use the right kind of food colouring. Gel pastes and stuff like that aren't quite right, and um, they tend not to mix very well. Um, what I always use is an oil-based colour. Um, Americolor is a good brand that does a lot of them. Um, or you can use powder coloured as well, but I find the oil-based colours mix in a lot better. And another thing to remember with colouring white chocolate is some of the colours will make it stiffen up a bit. Um, the pink, which I'm about to use, is really nice um, and doesn't have too much of an effect, but the red, for example, makes it stiffen up really quickly. So you do have to sort of experiment a little bit uh, with the amounts of colouring that you're going to put in. And also, this stuff is super duper um, <laughs> concentrated, so a little goes a long way. Now, I've already melted my um, white chocolate with some cocoa butter and some white super white as well. Uh, the reason I'm using super white is just to get it back to a, a paler base colour before I add the colour so that the yellow doesn't kind of murky it up. Uh, so it's all lovely and melted, it's just the right consistency and I'm going to start by adding a couple of drops and seeing what my colour's like. Now, if you do find that by adding colour you've stiffened up your white chocolate a little bit too much, then I would recommend having a little bit of um, melted cocoa butter on hand just to add a couple of drips to it, just to loosen it up again. But this one's looking fine, so I'm going to go ahead and drip my cake. Now, if you find that your white chocolate is seizing up a little bit before you've had a chance to spread it out neatly, then you can just heat your palette knife up, just get it nice and hot, but make sure it's dry. So I'd normally have like a, a cup of boiling water, uh, but just make sure you don't use a wet palette knife and that will keep it nice and smooth. But this one's turned out pretty well. So now that you have mastered the drip cake, there's lots of things you could do. You could even try doing like a rainbow drip, which would look brilliant. Uh, even do a painted gold drip, which I've actually done on my channel. So I'll put the link to that in the description box below. It is from Christmas, but don't let that put you off. It's good for all year round, guys. Um, and if you, do take, uh, if you do take pictures of your work, then please do put them on Instagram using the hashtag Cupcake Gemma so that I can check them out and check out your dripping work. Um, so I hope that's uh, been helpful for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments box below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, the Crumbs and Doilies team and I will be back on Tuesday with a Tuesday tip for you. And also, I'll be back at the regular time on Thursday uh, with a cupcake recipe, so I'll see you then. In the meantime, head over to Crumbs and Doilies website to check out more of our awesome cakes. And if you like my apron and you want one of your own, then please do go to cupcakegemma.com where there is this apron and lots of other cool stuff. So go and get yourself a treat. Go and make yourself a drip cake, and I'll see you soon. Bye.